All right, there we go. Hello, Rosa Rubio, the young legend herself. <laughs> um, do you want me to uh, read your resume or uh, do you want to talk about all the things you've done? Uh, you can ask me questions from it if you want. I can kind of introduce myself. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. So uh, my name is Rosa Rubio. I work for Gads Hill Center. I am the community programs manager, and I have been um, working with Gads Hill Center since 2015. Um, but I didn't, obviously, I didn't start off as the community programs manager, but mm -hmm. we can get into that a little bit more a little bit later. All right. Well, I would, well, I have it written down here, and you're actually looking at it. But how I met Rosa. Uh, so I actually did an internship last summer. And Rosa actually called me back. Uh, we worked together for a couple of months. I did my best. We did uh, Play Streets 2020. Oh my God, we're already in 2021. Yeah, and that <laughs> uh, was virtual. Yeah, that that was tough. And it was funny because I remember, I remember it was like my second day, or no, my <laughs> first day that you were like, "Look, you just you just have to run with me, bud. Like that's all we could do." <laughs> so. My job as office assistant intern was to, just to make Rosa's job easier and whether I did good or not. I think I did well. Um, I think you did, definitely. But Rosa was definitely one of the best supervisors I've had. I've worked at Walmart. I worked as a tow truck driver. I worked at a kid's clothing store, a liquor store, casino, COVID testing lab. Rosa was definitely the best. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I'm sure you get that a lot, though, like, oh, Rose is great to work with. <laughs> you know what? I don't know that I'm great to work with. I just think that it's so important to take a team approach, right? Like, mm -hmm. yes, I am, um, you know, the coordinator, manager, whatever you want to call me for my community programs. But the thing for me is I really want my my team to do well. And mm -hmm. if we don't all feel like a team and we're not all supporting each other, then it becomes more of, you know, I don't know, like a job. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yes, it is a job. But when you're having fun with it, um, I don't, and I think you can attest to this, no day is ever the same in community yeah. programs at Gads Hill. I don't think there was ever a day where you did the same thing twice in a row. Like a day that just like come, you come in and you know what you're doing. It's like, I like to say you kind of fly by the seat of your pants. Um, because you're always on edge, something's always coming up, whether it's an event, whether it's, you know, um, volunteer opportunities, yeah, exactly. Um, outreach events or workshops that come up in the community. So, yeah, it was definitely something different every day. <laughs> and I don't know, we just kind of like, we're on the same wavelength. We're like, what do we have to do? And we'll just do it. <laughs> and it wasn't yeah. like oh, well, what can't we do? What can we do? I was like, no, 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 we got this. <laughs> That's how I describe my internship. I don't know. I if, love that. I love that. Yeah, because uh, I don't know, man. I'm sure we've both worked in places where some people just didn't have that drive. Yeah. I mean, I can think of a lot of examples. <laughs> we don't have to get into that. Um. Yeah, I agree. I think there's, um, with community programs, I feel like we just really, the, the, the community health and the community engagement is so important. So it's so, um, I don't know, there's not really anything that you can throw at me and I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do, or I cannot make this happen. Um, I love the way that you said it, you know, you're just like, there's no, I can't do this or I'm not going to do this or you just, okay, how do I get this done? And that's oh, definitely. I even take that step away. I'm like, let's do it <laughs> just in the moment. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's funny. Cause you texted me like 20 minutes ago. Hey, are you free to volunteer this Saturday? And I'm like, <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> yes. Four days. Yes. Who else yep. is with me? And people are like, well, I need details, dude. It's like, you got me. Okay. We do need details, but. Okay. Yeah. I need to know where I'm going. Right. Right. Um, right what right. am I doing there? Yeah. 
I think that's kind of funny. Um, yeah. So let's talk about like your life story. Up until college, you graduated from Trinity Christian College with a bachelor's in psychology. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I went back to school a little bit later. I had my children in my um, late teens and early 20s, not even so late teens, but um, let's just say I have a son in college now. Um, he's 23. Um, and then I had my, my other children throughout my 20s. Um, I never imagined I'd go back to school. I just kind of thought that wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I overcame um, a very rare disease. And while I was sick, I just knew that there was something else that I needed to do. Um, I didn't know what, had no clue what that was. But I went back to school with the permission from my neurologist and we... Um, I started an online program through the University of Phoenix. I um, was able to complete that, receive my associate's degree in education and thought, I'm gonna go to school and I'm gonna be a teacher because then I can work on my kids' schedule. Mm -hmm. I can work and be off at the same time they are. And then as I started at Trinity in their adult learning program to become a teacher, I realized that I did not wanna be responsible for teaching little people and that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, what was I thinking? Like, this is the responsibility, like our future. I can't do this. Oh my God, really? <laughs> yeah, it scared the heck out of me. I was like, and kids are just not good all the time. You know, they're not my own children. I can't discipline them. I can't correct them yeah. the way that I would my own children. Obviously, I don't, um, I have to say, I've never hit my children. Sometimes I want to, but I don't. <laughs> um, so I just thought like, how would I correct someone else's child and not um, you know, then I have to worry that the concern of, um, you know, parents being upset because, you know, you've corrected their child and things mm -hmm. like that. So, and then um, I was taking a class at Trinity in their adult learning program. And I, you know, it was focused on how to deal with parents too, and how sometimes there's lack of um, involvement from parents with their child, with their children's education. And I thought, I don't want any part of that, right? Like our, I have the utmost respect for teachers and educators all around because honestly that scared the daylights out of me. Like I was mm -hmm. like, there's no way. Um, and one of my classes that was required was a psychology class. Um, and I met Dr. Uh, Colosimo, who was my, um, what my professor for that psychology class. And I just fell in love. With psychology and how it all worked? Yes, oh, I fell wow. in love with psychology. I fell in love with the idea of being able to get a better, better understanding of how the brain works and how things that happen in our environment affect us. Um, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. So what kind of age group did you think of teaching when you still wanted to be a teacher? Oh, well, I thought it would be so easy to just do like first grade, second grade, oh, um, no. maybe kindergarten. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll just do that. That's super easy. And that's no, it's not easy. It's so um, it's so much responsibility. And um, I just thought I'm like, man, I don't even know how my kids are going to turn out. So I don't know if this is going to work. Like how I can't even get this together at home. Can you imagine trying to do it with somebody else's kids? And then 26 um, of them. <laughs> 32 kids in the classroom like I was like no um and things were really different back then that was about almost 10 years ago oh okay and so I you know that whole going through that process I just thought no that's not for me um but I was really excited to be on the same schedule as my children um and I also thought like perfect summers off um mm -hmm. you know I can be off on the weekends you know, um, and then another thing came to mind also that I realized my kids were going to grow up yeah, and they were going to leave like, or be on their own or live their own lives. Right. That's, that's the hope as a parent that you have. Um, that they're successful. But, yes. That they're happy and they're content with whatever it is, whatever lifestyle they choose. Right. And I thought I'm going to be a teacher so I could work on the same schedule as them and they're going to all be living their own lives and I'm going to sit here and still have to be a teacher. Do I really want that for myself? Do I really want that um, 
do I want the responsibility of shaping our children? Um, and also they're, they're not going to need me anymore. Um, and I thought I really needed to be passionate. I really needed to feel passionate about what I was going to do. And you didn't feel that passion in teaching, like it didn't no. like, hold you. No, I work. I did a lot of volunteer work at my kids' school. I always mm -hmm. um, kind of sat in when the teachers, you know, kind of more like um, like a helper. I did a lot of volunteer work. I wasn't like a teacher's aide or anything, but I assisted in the school um, and I organized like fundraisers and things like that. I was very involved, um, but oh man, I just couldn't wait to get out of there when I was done with, you know, sitting in on a classroom mm -hmm. or helping with lunch duty and all that. And I know that's a time where the kids are obviously more heightened. They're, they're, they're hyper, right? Cause that's finally the time they get to go out and relax. But it was wild. And I was like, mm, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be around these kids all day. <laughs> all day you want me to be around them all day oh my god okay. and then go home to my own kids oh there's no way that's that's hilarious so <laughs> then you found psychology so did you have to change like your course schedule and all that and take all oh that's oh that's so frustrating i had to change everything um i had to even switch over from uh being an adult in in the adult learning program the adult learning education program for trinity to uh traditional student um, which they, was also interesting because then I was in college with all these young people who were like late teens, early twenties. And here I am, um, like 32 at the time, maybe 33. Oh, wow. And I was like, all right, let's do this. Um, I was really blessed. I, I met some, um, friends that I'm still friends with, um, some great, amazing young people who I was just like, man, I hope my kids grow up to be just like you. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and they were great. They were, I met quite a few, um, like I said, young people from around the country who came to Trinity. Um, you know, Trinity is a very small college in Palos, Illinois. And um, I chose that school because to be honest, I chose it because originally I was checking it out because it was really close to my kids' school. My kids were in private school at the time. And I um, I was like, I really need to be close to them. I need to be able to make, make sure I'm fitting um, my schedule around their schedule. And I need to be able to drop off and pick up. Just in case. And, mm -hmm. I said just in case like they ever needed yeah. you. Yeah. And I worked at the school during the day for like lunch duty and things like that, like as a lunch monitor. And so I needed to be able to get back and forth really quickly. Um, and so it's funny, there's this little bridge um, at Trinity and it kind of takes you over this little river. And I was driving up to check the school out in the winter. And so all the branches from the trees were bare mm -hmm. and they were covered in glistening in snow. Uh -huh. um, and so I'm not like, I am a very spiritual person and I honestly felt in my heart that I was in the right place at that time and I was exactly where I needed to be. Oh my gosh, that's it was, amazing. It was so powerful. Um, I know it kind of sounds silly to some people, but it was literally, um, it literally moved me to tears. And so I knew that whatever my journey was there at Trinity, that's where I needed to be. That was definitely one of the places you had to be. Wow, that's oh, that's that's so interesting. Like you knew, like you felt it. I felt the energy so um it was so powerful. I'm telling you, I had never um felt anything. I was never more sure about anything in my life before. Before really? that. You didn't feel like anything similar before before that time? Not when it came to my education and not when it came to even earning a high, uh, a degree of a higher level, right? Like I never imagined that I would go back to school, uh, let alone go back and get my bachelor's in psychology. Wow. That's, that's so interesting. Well, you made it. Congrats. <laughs> I did. I graduated in 2014, um, with my, um, bachelor's in psychology and, um, just, it was an amazing journey. I met so many supportive people that I still keep in touch with. 
Um, and, you know, it's just been watching them. I can see, like I said, they're very, they were very young people. And so watching them grow is like, it really touches my heart. And they're, uh -huh. you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like, you guys are, you know, so young and it's so great that, you know, you, I did things kind of backwards, but it's amazing to watch them grow and grow from literally being, you know, um, young little 19 year old. Um, <laughs> so like now they have their masters and they're um, m most of them because we were psych, psych majors. Uh, most of them have their masters in um, either social work or um, clinical psychology. So they're all practicing therapy at this time. You know, it's funny that you say like, you met a lot of people that you still keep in contact with. Because I feel as if like you are timeless. Like you can really hang out with anybody. I feel like, and maybe that's why we vibed. Cause like when I was in my time, my young life, I, I, I had friends that were like 18 to like 70 and like, I was really cool with them. And I feel like you're definitely one of those people as well. Thank you. I'm that's, that's huh. awesome to hear. I don't know. I don't know. There's something going on in the air. It's cool. Yes. <laughs> um, so when you were studying psych, did you be were, did you ever think like, wow, this is why people react to this or like I can see this in another person? <laughs> did you have all of those like, oh, my goodness, I recognize that? Yes very many aha moments obviously i'm not a clinician by any means um i don't ever diagnose anyone but myself but <laughs> <laughs> which we all do of course we all do that but, but um you know it's understanding how the brain works and understanding how our bodies and how our brains react to psych uh to trauma um in itself is so interesting and it's it's fascinating, um, you know, even just everything, every aspect, everything in our surrounding and how we, how we grow up as children and how, um, you know, even how we react to things as we're growing. And then when we have our own families or choose to have families, but I completely respect and understand why some people choose not to have families or not to have children, right? Because it doesn't yeah. mean just because you don't have children doesn't mean you don't have a family. Um, you know, people have partners and have pets and things like that. And I totally understand and respect why some people have chosen not to have children. I remember uh, I took an English class, but the focus in college, in, how do I say it? The focus wasn't Shakespeare. It was um, LGBT, like okay. history. And uh, I don't know, it's just so impressive the uh, the strides that psychology has made in the last 150 years. I don't know, that's just so interesting. And you spoke of trauma. And I think it's funny because a lot of people are like, oh, like they're kids, like they're not going to remember. Kids remember. Like I remember being like four years old like seeing all the stuff that happened that that magically everyone forgot right mm -hmm. i don't know well you were yeah. a business manager i'm sure you've seen a lot of these traumatic events and you know things that happen yeah definitely and i think um a lot of that is just even um you know they say you don't remember anything until um Oh my gosh, I can't remember what age my daughter and I were talking about this because yeah, she's like actually looking to be a forensic major. Oh wow. Um, and she can't decide between she keeps going back and forth between forensics and psychology. Why not both? And so she said she thinks she's gonna do both now. Um <laughs> I'm like, just do everything, just do everything you can. Um and so it's funny because she used to say when she was younger that she wanted to go to Trinity and major in psychology, but because she wants to um, do both psychology and forensics, she figures it's better to go somewhere where they have both. Um, but yeah, she's definitely taking, um, she's going to take this way further than I ever could. Um, and I am so excited and I can't wait to see because she is definitely um, a, a, a psych nerd for sure. 
is this the uh the older one or the younger one yeah the 17 year old oh, yeah really? oh, she's a senior I... this year she graduates and so she's leaving me definitely leaving me well um, she's going and... an hour south isn't she no she actually decided to go to arizona Ah. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm excited for her and I can't wait to see what, you know, how it all unfolds, but I'm definitely going to be sad come August. Oh. I move her in um August um August 30th I think is her move in date. So Did you go see the campus with her or did you see video? I didn't. Or... She went on her own in January, but I have had about two virtual tours. Um I like the campus. Um, everything is on campus, so she never really even has to leave. Oh, so it's um, like a mini town, right? Yeah, they have like a grocery store in one of their apartment buildings. Um, it's uh, everything is just there for her. However, I'm sure she's gonna leave campus, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, at some point. I mean, we're gonna... yeah, I had a panic attack when she said she might go on a hike. I was like, no. <laughs> No, absolutely not. I was like, if you ever go on a hike and then she was like, mom, calm down. And I like literally started crying. And I was like, you don't understand. I just, you know, I can't imagine. And, and I was like, you better not ever go alone. So I'm like freaking out. And she's like, I wouldn't. I'm just like, you know, we've seen all these different stories and she's obsessed with like all these different um, like crime documentaries and things like that. And so yeah, I was like, girl, you're lucky I don't put a tracker in your back somewhere. So just let's you could track her phone, can't you? You pay for it. Yeah, but what if her phone like isn't with her on her? Like it needs the tracker needs to be on right. her. <laughs> in her arm, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, my kids are like, whoa, you're insane. Um yeah. So I guess I should have mentioned that when I introduced myself. Um, usually within the first five minutes, you know, I'm okay, a mom. Okay. I have <laughs> four kids, um, two boys, two girls. And so yeah, that's that's that is um, aside from my work, that is my life. Um, so, yeah, my son is away at college. He's been gone for some years now, but my daughter's just going, and it's just very nerve wracking. <laughs> and it's gonna be hard every time. Every time, every time. <laughs> so uh, the two younger ones are like, "Don't worry, we're gonna go local. We won't leave." Right, you. community college, first two years. I'm like, you know what? You could stay with me as long as you want. <laughs> <laughs> you That's just funny. stay here. I'm fine. Um, you know, so it's, you know, there's that, right? But um, I feel like going back to the trauma conversation, um, you know, they say you don't remember, you don't have any memories before the age of, I think, four. Mm -hmm. um, and I vividly remember um, being talked to about, my parents separation and I was two and I remember this very vividly a conversation um <laughs> a conversation at two years old with my father and I'm sure he thought I would never remember that um but I do I remember it very very clearly um and that's because when we have trauma we have grooves that kind of go through our brain and so when those grooves happen they never go away yeah um so, so definitely trauma definitely has quite the impact on, on our brain. Yeah, that's, uh, oh my goodness. And you're, you're a few years after two and you still remember. I'm a few years later than four. I could still remember vividly. Oh my God. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's talk about yeah. something happy. Let's talk about <laughs> one thing happy. All right. Yes. Yes. Um, how are the dogs doing? So um, my 14 year old Benjamin is um, still training his service dog. I don't know if you remember, we got the dog last June. Mm -hmm. um, we went to a small Amish town and got this dog and it's a lab. And she was like a small cow. Um, you got the dog was a real still, small puppy, right? She was, she was, well, she was never small, but she was a puppy. She was right. literally, um, I think, eight weeks old when we picked her up. And uh, whatever the age is, once you're able to pick them up, that's we mm -hmm. picked her up like that weekend. Um, and she was the cutest thing. I mean, I don't know if you remember the picture. She was just this yellow lab and she's just so pretty. And she was so cute and she had like little rolls and all that. But now she's just 
gigantic and lean and um, she's always, ha- I knew she was going to be a big dog because when we picked her up, she had the longest legs, mm-hmm. um, and the biggest paws. And I was like, this dog is going to be massive. So she, even now when, you know, we got the new house and we moved in in August and so she runs. And when if I take her out, she knows that she could run all over me. So she just runs like speed runs from the front of the yard to the back of the yard. And she's just going back and forth and running laps and, um, and my favorite was last uh, last summer when I was actually going into the office and I had just gotten dressed and I was like, let me take this dog out before I run out because who knows when Benjamin's going to wake up and I'm, you know, and then the dog jumps on me and I'm dressed, ready to go to work and her paws are full of mud. Of course they so, are, right? And, and she's as tall as me when she stands up. I'm only five feet. So this dog just jumps right up and just so happy that I had her outside and just got me all full of mud. I was like, I hate you right now. Like, <laughs> In I really, this moment. Oh, I was like, I can't stand you right now. But um, she's amazing. She is such a good dog. She's, um, you know, she's, she's very, she's learning very well. Um, doesn't get distracted very easily when we're out with her. Um, she's a great service dog to Benjamin. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Benjamin is doing all that training on his own. Oh, wow. That is really impressive. Yeah, he's pretty amazing. Yeah, so he's doing, he's le- he's self-taught, um, but he's read a lot. He's done a lot of his own research um, and he just works really hard on making sure that he's using credible sources mm-hmm. and things like that to make sure that he is um, training his dog appropriately for his needs. Wow, that's, that's insane. Yeah. Like insane in a good way, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then we have the little dog who, um if i remember she's a bit older right she's about four and um she's four and a half now and she's just naughty she's just (laughs) you know she just i i can't stand her really most of the time she barks the minute somebody comes even past the house oh i know and she just yaps and it's little dogs too yep she's about nine pounds um and she just barks and barks and barks and barks and doesn't stop I have friends over, like literally I've had friends over like twice in the last couple months and she literally barked the whole time they were here. And I was like, I'm going to give you away. (laughs) I just don't even want you anymore. Right now, if somebody came right now and said, can I have her? I would be like, here, take her. I'm done. So done. Um, I was like, no, I I can't. I can't do this. Um, And when my brother comes over, he literally, you know, because my mom, I don't know if I told you, my mom moved in with me. She's 84 and she can't really care for herself anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, And so she's with me and the dog will go down there just because the dog knows that if my mom has food, she's going to feed her and then she's going to give her treats and she's not supposed to give her treats. And though, you know, no matter what I say, my mom is like sneaking her food all the time. And I'm like, mom, she doesn't need frijoles and arroz. Like, she's fine. Like, leave her be. Let her just, she doesn't need to eat anything that you have. Um, Yeah, yeah, no, she's a naughty dog. Um, I was so mad at her last night because I have an accent chair that I had up here, but I put it downstairs for my mom. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a white chair. It's like an off-white chair with these black birds on it. And it's really cool. It's just a cool accent chair. Mm -hmm. Um. I actually bought it on OfferUp when I was buying the house. I don't know if you remember, but I was buying a bunch of stuff from OfferUp that was like really good condition. And my sister was freaking out. She's like, it's COVID. I'm like, I don't care. I just it. It's fine. Um, You know, and I asked people, I was like, hey, has anyone in your household had COVID? You know, have you guys come in contact with anyone? And nothing. Um, I'm happy to say I was able to purchase all of the furniture, all the big furniture, except for our beds um from offer up wow like i got everything almost brand new from people who were either moving or just um redoing their houses and stuff Mm -hmm. like that so it was really cool wow that Um, is really impressive but this damn dog the little one peed on that chair yesterday on the one chair I i wanted to knock her out i really did i was like you are so naughty and she just I don't know where she is right now, but she, um, yeah, I was really mad at her. And then she was just like, she's like, I don't care. You know, a little diva. Like, 
she just looked at me and then looked at my mom like do you have any snacks like so yeah my my mother-in-law is the same way i live with my <laughs> i live with my in-laws and <laughs> i'm pretty sure your mother knows everything about everything my mother-in-law knows everything about everything <laughs> any question you have she knows it don't worry about it she knows it you know I actually had a conversation I think with your mother-in-law before oh my god you did I did because I invited her to attend some of our workshops yeah she is she's she was an awesome lady though definitely oh no she she definitely she has to know everything yeah right (laughs) right right. she has to know everything (laughs) whatever you need to know she's gonna tell you yeah oh and I forgot that did happen didn't it yes yes but yeah, I think, um, yeah, no, she was, she was awesome. Yeah. Living with her is good. <laughs> so you're, um, right now. You're, she spoils your dog then, I'm guessing. So one example that I remember is I fed, I fed my dog, right? Cause I was like, all right, let's get the day started. The other dogs are still asleep. Everybody's asleep. Mm-hmm. And then like an hour later, she's like feeding the dog that I just fed. And I'm like, you can't do that. And she's like, no, no, no. She she could eat. You know, all the other dogs are eating. Why can't she eat? And I'm like, ama, she already ate. It's okay. And she's like, no, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. I'm like, dude, come on. You're killing me. You're killing me. You can't like watch somebody else eat, right? So that like should apply to the dogs too. Right. My kids will let me because I I do the same thing. I'm like, oh, but she's probably hungry. Like she only had breakfast and now we're having lunch. So why can't the dog have lunch too? Right. Uh, and my, my kids are like, she's not human. <laughs> she is a dog. Stop Where's overfeeding the... her. Cause exactly. she's going to get fat. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. They're not humans. If they were humans, they'd be humans and paying rent. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. I agree. That that's a really good point. Rosa. They, they should have to pay rent. <laughs> so I, I don't feed her. My mom feeds her, but I, I've gotten better. Um, but my dog begs a lot. So the minute she even hears us opening something, she could be knocked out napping. And the minute she hears the refrigerator open or a bag open, she oh, runs that, to the kitchen. That is hilarious. She knows. And I'm like, I'm like what is, where did you come from? Like, where? How, how did you know what was happening? I've heard her come out of my daughter's <laughs> bedroom upstairs. And you just hear her little paws just running down the stairs. And I'm like, what? That's who funny. invited you? What? Why? Why did you come out? That's funny. So, yeah. dogs? No, dogs aren't dumb. Dogs are very smart. No, no, they are. They're very smart, and she, you know, she's she's a little brat. So she would never got as many treats and and table food as she does now. Like I said, because she goes downstairs and she looks at my mom, and my mom is like, "Oh, but she wants to eat." And you know, my mom pretends that she doesn't remember that we told her not to feed her extra food. Um, you know, so I mean, what are you really gonna do? You know, that's yeah. that's your mom. She knows. She knows she could get away with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. She'll be like, "Oh, I forgot," and I'm like, <laughs> "I think you know what you're doing." Um, my mom's funny. She's so funny. Um, she is. I think she definitely is. Um, getting a little dementia, so she does forget uh-huh. a lot. Um, she forgets a lot of things. You know, she could be mid conversation, and mm-hmm. then she just forgets what she's talking about um so you know for me I'm like you know I don't I don't really it doesn't bother me but for her it gets really frustrating and I'm like it's okay I'm like you know we're you know I'm busy all the time and I forget stuff so I try to make her feel better um but it's really hard definitely going into this phase of having to take care of her is definitely not something I was looking forward to you know especially to see her kind of getting weaker and deteriorating and not being able to like, you know, so everything, it's a finished basement. So there's a bedroom down there and there was what was supposed to be our family room Mm -hmm. has become now her bedroom and kind of like her living area. So she has a bed and then she has a, you know, her, her sitting chair and an ottoman and a TV. And, you know, there's kind of like a wet bar set up because again, it was supposed to be my family room. Mm -hmm. Um, So you know, it's just all set up for her and it's comfortable. And then there's a bathroom down there. Um, 
you know, so I, I'm trying to make things as comfortable and as homey as possible for her. Um, you know, but it's just hard because she can't come upstairs and hang out. She can't come upstairs and just, you know, I mean, she has everything she needs down there, but it's more of like, um, you that know, she wants people to aspect. And, yeah, she wants to yeah. come up and she wants to be able to just go through the fridge herself. And she has a small fridge downstairs, but it's a mini fridge. So it's small and it's, yeah. you know, she can't really go in there and like she has to bend over and that's hard. The minute she gets back up, she's like really dizzy and she's dealing with a, a different, you know, different things like vertigo. And so I'm like, you're not allowed to bend down. You can't pick up anything that falls. Just leave it alone. We'll get it. Don't get up and go to the garbage can if you don't have to. So it's a lot of just trying to make her just as comfortable as possible. And you said she's 84? Yeah, she's 84. Yeah, my grandfather is uh, 68 or 69, and he's starting to get dementia. It's so sad. Yeah, it yeah. is. If I get one wish in life, it's to just go out sharp. Well, right yeah it's funny I with my illness I've worked with and 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 met many many um neurologists mm -hmm. um my neurologist is amazing but it's so funny I was having some testing done and I, two of the neurologists were talking and they were talking about the best way they would hope to go out right yeah <laughs> I was like, who does that, right? They're like, oh, yeah, I totally hope I get, like, dementia and just, like, forget everything and go quick. Like, Oh, my I was God. Like, I was like, wow. I, I don't like, know about dementia. Well, you know, what's funny is uh, if you keep it upbeat, you could be like, this is a problem for all of you, not me. <laughs> I, I forgot what I forgot. You know, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, I was like, oh, my God, that's an awful thing to say. How, how do you think that way? But yeah it's um yeah they were like yeah no because i'll forget everything and i won't know anything won't, and i yeah. would be sad like <laughs> what is sad who knows i'm living <laughs> yes yes oh my gosh yeah no um i was like you guys are too funny that's ridiculous um yeah i was in and out of rush and and had so many different you know teams of doctors that we were pretty much just like friends at the, at, at some points because I was like, you just, I'm here all the time. And I, you know, so. We hang out more than friends. So like, yeah, I'm we like, we're, I was like, you guys go ahead and say whatever you want to say. Um, but no, they were amazing. They still are. So I still have all of my team there. Um, so that is where I got my vaccination. Um, I got oh, my you're first vaccinated? Vaccine. I got my first vaccine last week. Okay, so in a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. uh, so I got Pfizer. So Pfizer, it's 21 days later. So oh, three weeks. Scheduled, okay. um, like that first week of August. Or I'm sorry, April. Jeez. See, we forget. Already going into August. We're forgetful. That's what it is. Exactly. That's just the <laughs> way it is. Well, congrats. I'm still looking to get mine. My, uh, my girl got scheduled through Northwest Side Housing Center. Okay, good. But she did it by herself, of course. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I'm on my own here. I'm on an island. <laughs> are her parents going to, are they thinking about getting the vaccine? Um, yeah, definitely. I think it'd be silly not to get the vaccine. I don't know why yeah. somebody wouldn't get the vaccine. There is so many things, so many people are nervous yeah. about. Um, I'm also part of a Illinois Unidos uh, committee. And we've been um, just being able to share that space with, so many um, intelligent people who are working so hard. Um, some of these people are doctors who've been working the front line since the beginning um, oh, wow. of COVID. And so it's, it's amazing to hear the stories that they talk about, but it's also been so great to share space with them and understand what the vaccine is and what it entails, right? That I don't have to be fearful. I don't have to worry about getting it myself, giving it to my mom, having my daughter receive it as well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I'm definitely confident. Um, Dr. Luna from CDPH has great presentations on the vaccine in both Spanish and English. And she's just done an amazing job of um, debunking those myths and really helping people understand why it's important. And as the Latino community um, has been affected so tragically, like there's been so many deaths and there's been so many people infected um, and just trying to really get it out there and trying to encourage people to 
get them informed so they can make the best decision for themselves. Yeah, us uh, Hispanic people are in a unique situation in the sense that some of us are fearful for obvious reasons to call authorities if we are super oh. sick. Um, for sure. You, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, oh, yeah. Chicago being, uh, what was the name of it? Uh, Sanctuary City? Yes. Yeah. But uh, Yeah, so. Yeah, it's really good that this vaccine, it's insane because this vaccine was made in a year. That's That's wild. Like, that does not happen. Yes, and that's exactly why I think a lot of people are so uh, fearful and are thinking, like, I'm not going to get the vaccine because, you know, how effective can it be? Or is it really good? Or is, you know, so many questions and so many things that people yeah. have. Um, so many myths, right? Like, there's, uh, like, the misinformation. Myth of, oh, mm -hmm. All this misinformation of, oh, well, I had COVID, so I don't need to get the vaccine. Or... Um, they're inserting a microchip into me, right? Oh, um, God, I hate that one so much. Uh, or I saw someone comment on um, the mayor was speaking live on Facebook and there were people on there that comment and one person even put a link to an article. I didn't click on it because I was like, I can't, I can't do this with yeah. you. Um, I don't comment on any of that stuff because it's, no, it's just, yeah. I can't. There's no sense in getting getting into it with people like that because there's not there's never you, no one is ever going to agree to disagree right no one respects other people's opinions, um, and so this person said, read it. Um, within two years, people are going to have all sorts of autoimmune diseases, and people are going to have this, and people are going to have that, right? And I was like, if you only knew, if you only knew the science and effort that went into this. Yes. And the thing is, people are going to have things. Things are going to arise, right? People are going to have, uh, I mean, come on, who would have thought, you know, when I had my first, you know, um, diagnosis with, with my rare disease, it's literally one to two in every hundred thousand people get this, this disease, this, oh, wow. this really rare disorder, you know, and I know people way before COVID, way before COVID vaccines, who have suffered from really rare diseases. Mm, wow, that's, um, it, that's insane. It, it's just crazy. Um, autoimmune disorders are just something that are it's going to happen. Um, and it's not going to happen because you get a vaccine. Yeah. Um, what do you think is your least favorite or most annoying uh, myth? Um, that they're giving us this vaccine to, um, uh, oh my gosh, the one where everybody's talking about how it's going to make everyone infertile. Oh, that's a TV show. Like they already. <laughs> what was that? What show was that? Um, I can't even remember. British, you know, I hardly ever watch TV, so it's. Um, but yeah, I I know there was something like that, and I was like, what? So yeah, telling people that taking this vaccine is going to make you infertile and that's how they're going to stop the population from growing. I'm like, oh God, guys, really? And it's, you know, it's sad to me that people actually believe this even after hearing the facts and understanding the science. And I think we've talked about this before. Um, you know, it's science is real. <laughs> oh my God, who'd have thunk it, right? It's a real thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I had a, I shouldn't call you, man. That's, listen, listen here, Rosa. So that actually, the name of the show is called Utopia. I don't know if oh, you is that what it is? with the, uh, so the point of the show is actually they send out a disease that has like a hundred percent kill rate, right? Or death rate. And so people are lining up for the vaccine but the vaccine makes you infertile. And I think that's where they get it from. So it's like life imitating art imitates life imitates art. It's kind of stupid. It's really stupid. And there's no real point to it either, right? Like, what's the point of killing humanity? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, maybe they're going to rebuild a better humanity, but hey, if that's what it's going to take, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> like, whatever. They, they need us poor people to do everything. So like, why would they get rid of us? Exactly. Exactly. I agree. I agree. That's so funny. Um, and with that, yeah, it definitely, um, that one. And <clears throat> I don't know if you've seen or heard anything about this. Um, the, you know, the thermoscan thermometers, mm -hmm. um, people were really starting. <laughs> I know where you're going. Go ahead. People were starting to freak out because they said that it was killing the brain cells uh, when you check the temperature at the forehead. So people were saying like, can you not check my temperature on the forehead? Can you check it on my wrist or on my arm or my hand? Um, because they were afraid that when they received their, when they got their temperature checked and the little temperature thing went to your head, you know, it's just a thermoscan yeah. um, that they were actually losing brain cells or that somehow these thermoscans were messing with their brains. Um, and so I definitely had to have a conversation with some uh, of my health promoters. And I was like, look, that, that's not true. And it's really important for you to understand because one, I can't have you going out into the community <laughs> saying that stuff. Like, no, right. no, no, no. Um, I said, but you definitely cannot believe everything you hear on the news. And a thermoscan thermometer is definitely not going to um, harm your brain in any way. Um, I assume that if you like had a thousand thermoscans on your head at one yeah. time, like nonstop for like, I don't know, two years or something, then maybe we might be talking about some damage or some sort of, you know, but unless, you know, no, that's, it's, yeah, it's completely it's... inaccurate and that was wrong. Um, but yeah, I was really, I was really surprised and it's amazing what we will believe when we hear it, especially when we hear it on the news, right? We hear these things on the news and of course it has to be right. Yeah, because the news has never been wrong. Exactly. Right? Ever. Exactly. And this is what our at-risk community believes. This is what they hear. These are, tr to them, these are trusted sources. And that's why it's so important. And that's why um, I feel like our workshops are so critical and they are important because when we're bringing them information, we're bringing them facts and everything is based on facts and based on science. And, you know, it's not, you know, it's not opinion. It's not, yeah. I made this up. It's not some other guy at the bus stop told me. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's really important to continue, um, you know, and, I don't know if you remember all of the workshops we offer, but we definitely offer, you know, like mental wellness, mental health awareness so that people can um, understand the differences between like anxiety and depression. Um, so they can understand that it's, you know, and breaking down that stigma, right? Understanding that it is a real thing, that it's not something that just happens to other people, um, especially in the Latino community, oh breaking down that stigma and helping people understand this is real and this is how it's okay to get support yeah oh absolutely all right do you want to talk about uh where we work well where you work <laughs> gadsill center is an amazing place i absolutely love my uh my organization um i i don't even know where to start right so my ceo is maricela garcia she is um a very strong independent um woman who has just always really um had our best interest as an organization in in mind right um and then our coo was is uh rosa julia who i think you did meet a couple times mm -hmm. um and then my direct supervisor is Nilsa. So as you could see, there's kind of a little bit of a trend. Uh, we have a lot of uh, women in leadership here at Gadsdale Center. And it is, I can't imagine working anywhere else at this point in my life. I really can't. Um, oh. I love what I do. I love who I work for. And I know that they have my back. Um, you know, I, I think I, I think I, I, I come from a, a line of long, uh, strong leadership. Um, and that's important to me. So being able to 
see how far Marisela has come. I, you know, I'm not going to give specifics, but she is just an amazing role model. Um, and she's hard. She's she can be tough, man. And I've met people, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, that's your CEO. Oh, you work there." And I'm like, "Yeah, I do," um, because I know that if she was a man, no one would question me that way. Mm -hmm. No one would say, "Oh, you work for, you know, so and so." He's really tough. No one would say that, um, but she is tough and she wouldn't be where she is if she wasn't as tough as she is. Um, and I'll leave it at that. But I am super proud to, to be um, able to share space with her and have that opportunity to learn from her and Rosa Julia. Uh, yeah, I've met them. I think I've met all of them a couple of times and <laughs> I don't know what other people said, but they were cool to me. Cool. Yeah, they're pretty cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, so let's uh, well, Gads Hill Center in Pilsen. I interned there for a couple of months over the summer, uh, where I worked with you and uh, yeah. kept in contact. Um, which program would you like to talk about first? Because you oversee so, a lot. Yeah. So um, within the agency, we focus on education and setting that foundation with families, right? So when I started in 2015, I started off as a home visitor for our home visiting early childhood program. We have um, a home-based program and we have center-based programs. Um, and then in addition to that, we also have um, our sites in our North Lawndale site and our um, Pilsen site, we have our summer camp where we work mostly with adolescents and teens. So that's from kindergarten through high school. Mm -hmm. And then we have our center base in North Lawndale, uh, Brighton Park, and Chicago Lawn. And those three sites are uh, child development centers. And so with those um, child development centers, we, uh, North Lawndale and Chicago Lawn are mainly two through five, whereas our Brighton Park location, which was opened up last January, it's a completely new site in Brighton Park, and they have babies as young as six weeks through five years old. So that's our first facility that we were able to open up um, to younger babies. Um, so it's a really awesome, it's a really awesome program. Um, I strongly believe that when you get involved with Gad's Hill Center at such a young age with your little ones or even preg uh, pregnant moms, you're setting a foundation for that education. You're, 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 you're laying down the bricks for this road of advocating for your child and learning how to um, get the support that you need and making sure your children are prepared for preschool and kindergarten. So that's what I started off doing um, in 2015 at our Brighton Park site. Um, I started off as a home visitor and I, I loved it. It was great. This is a program that is optional it's not, no one's obligated to be a part of our program. Um, it is for low income at risk families. And we go into the home and we work with the parents because parents are the first teachers. Parents are the ones who are the essential teachers to these little ones. And it's going to, they're going to be the teacher throughout their life. So we come in and we bring activities that you can make from, you know, a can of Pringles, um, you know, empty water bottles and learning and teaching how to do bowling in the backyard or, oh. you know, fill the water bottles with water. And then as they get a little older and letting them choose what kind of food, col what color food coloring to put in so that they can choose colors. And now you're learning colors and you're still using large motor skills to play bowling and you're rolling the ball across the room or, you know, the yard. So all those things are so important and you're, you're working these different functions for the kids and they're, they're learning by playing. Yeah. Which is the best because yeah. kids hate learning. <laughs> Let's be real. Exactly. Like who wants to sit down and like do a structured, you know, I think that our, our education system should really focus on our kids learning styles um, so that they can better learn. Right. Um, if you have a kid who can't sit still, but you want them to sit still for six hours, it's not going to work and they're not going to learn anything. And it's, they're going to be disruptive. They're going to, they're going to ha have disruption themselves. Um, so all of that is just so important. It, and it all, um, 
you know, it all factors in. So when I did receive my bachelor's in psychology, I did also receive my a minor in education. So education is definitely something I, it, it's, it weighs heavily on my heart. It's something that I am passionate about. Um, and then I moved into case management and kind of working more as um, doing a little bit more social services and direct service with families and helping them more with wraparound services, providing resources for mental health, providing resources for, um, you know, whatever our families needed. We do also assess the children. We assess babies um, every two months. And then once they turn 12 months, then it's every um, three to six months as they get older. Um, but these assessments are, are, are performed so that we can see how our children are developing. And then if there's anything that parents are concerned about, and it could be anything from, oh, you know, I, I just noticed my child doesn't use their left hand as much, or, you know, um, I'm concerned because my nephew is running and he's the same age and my child isn't running. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my child doesn't seem to say, have the same balance or my child isn't saying as many words. So if a parent has a concern, we also provide supportive services for um, early intervention assessments to make sure that the children can receive any kind of therapy that's needed should they be approved. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but some babies do just develop slower or faster than average, right? Like very much. Oh, yeah, definitely. Every child is different. So they're going to, the scale is going to vary. So on these assessments, there's like kind of like a range, right? So mm -hmm. if they're kind of like on a lower range or they're on a higher range, we might say, you know what, let's rescreen in two months and just mm -hmm. see how it goes or 30 days and let's see how it goes. If there's no improvement, then we'll, um, and obviously with that improvement, we're giving activities that can enhance those those developmental stages that parents might be concerned about or that the home visitor might be concerned about. Um, even fine motor, just kind of using their fine motor skills. Um, and parents might say, oh man, well, you know, they weren't able to do this activity. So I'm really concerned, but then you bring more activities and you tell parents, Hey, these are the kind of things that you can do with your child to improve those, uh, those, those, you know, those, those features and those little things that they're doing with their hands and, um, helping them use like clothes pins to, you know, use their pincers a little bit more and practice those little fine motor skills. Um, and normally the kids will, once they start practicing something, they master it, right? Um, and then if there's a real concern and there's no improvement, then we would reach out to um, early intervention and then we would have the children assessed in any area that they, that they need some support, which is fabulous because then you get these needed services, you get the support, and then they're ready for kindergarten. Whereas coming into kindergarten without any preventative therapies or any preventative, you know, any, any early intervention, then they're going into kindergarten and then they're falling behind before they even had a chance. Yeah. My girl, she teaches pre-K and she's yeah. told me a lot of these kids, they have no idea what's going on. Like they are just not ready. Yeah. I don't know. That's, uh... And it's tough because, you know, I'm sure she sees it. I'm sure she sees it all the time. And she knows that, you know, some kids might not be getting that one-on-one -on -one time. And that's what yeah. we do in the early childhood um, home visiting is really work with the parents and letting them know, like, you're their first teacher. You know, you can't sit down and just watch novelas. All you know, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, you have to sit down and you have to get in your child's face and you have to play and you have to read and you have to roll the ball on the floor. Um, that's what our home visitors do right now. Everything is virtual. Um, so they're like dropping material off and then they're working with the child virtually with the parent and the child. It's also tough because, you know, our community, both parents are working sometimes two jobs, you know, each person. Yeah. How, uh, how is that? Or like, how do we get past that kind of hurdle? Well, I guess the hurdle of poverty. Yeah, I think a lot of it is providing resources to the families. Um, you know, somebody's watching that child, right? Whether yeah. it be a grandparent, whether it be an older sibling, mm -hmm. um, the reality is, you know, we're working on those activities with the parents and then we're asking them to pass that along to whoever's spending the most time with the child so that those activities are still, you know, being practiced. Um, but the reality is we have so many families that are just literally 
trying to make it right working um you know just trying to survive um dealing with so many traumas of their own which is why we also provide mental health services to our families uh so is all of this like free or like low cost yes. It's all free. Um, there aren't any services that are through our program for our families that are of any charge to them. As long as they qualify to be enrolled in one of our programs, they qualify for our wraparound services as well. Wow. So mostly, um, you know, they they receive they they have the option of meeting with one of our clinicians, um, and then community programs, which is what I facilitate. Um, if I find out about job leads, if I find out about events that are in the community, if I find out about different events, uh, pop-up events for vaccines, for food distribution, things like that, I'm always making sure I send it to our managers so that they can provide it to their families. Um, even just providing a food basket or you know, um, coming to, to an event where food is being given out, that's a huge relief to families, right? That's something that's, um, that's something that our families need. And that's one, if I can alleviate one stress for them, then that's, you know, that's my goal. Um, if I find out about job leads, then I'm also able to provide people with those job leads and maybe they can get a job where they're making a little bit more money rather than having to work two jobs, right. Yeah. Or, you know, things like that so that they are able to spend time a little bit more at home with, with the family. Yeah. Even if it's like a dollar or two more per hour, yeah. that, that adds up really quickly. No, definitely it does. Do and you have? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I think um, our minimum wage is supposed to go up in July. I don't know. I think I think um, I heard something about that. They were working on some things. Why don't I look it up before we start saying things that aren't true? Right? Yeah. Wage increase 2021. On January 1st, 2021, the Illinois minimum wages increased to 11 per hour. And that's for the state of Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, 15 an hour. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't want to give a dollar amount, but um, yeah, I believe as of July 1st or in July at some point, minimum wage in Chicago is supposed to be $15 an hour. Uh, 15. All right. Wow. That's so definitely amazing. exciting. Um, and so there's always just things, whatever is happening in the community. Um, definitely trying to make sure that our, um, that it's getting passed along to our, our family support workers and our case managers and, um, to our families ultimately. Do you ever feel like some kind of superhero sometimes? Like, you know, people come around like, Rosa, thank you for that. That was, that was dope. And you're like, I got you, but everybody gets <laughs> one like Spider-Man. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm like, what? I'm like, what? You know, I'm like, no, don't thank me. I'm just glad that, you know, somebody was able to utilize this resource or something. Um, you know, um, whenever we're offered things in different programs, I'm just super excited that it's going to benefit our families. It's going to benefit our communities. Um, I get super excited about just being able to facilitate these workshops for our parents and with the hopes that they're going to take something from that workshop and they're going to incorporate it into their life a little bit, or maybe they've attended one of my workshops numerous times and they're tired of hearing it, but they're like, oh, wait, maybe this makes sense now. Maybe I can do this. Um, so, and I really get excited when we get um, parents who are interested in becoming health promoters. Um, currently, I want to say four out of six of my health promoters have come from within our agency uh, enrolled families. And so it's just super exciting. It's so exciting to see them work and who better to be out in the community talking to other people about um, resources and things that Gadsdale has to offer, but also resources in the community than their own you know, families and, and these moms who, again, like you were saying about your mother-in-law, who we know everything, right? As a mom, right? We know right. everything. Yeah. Uh, we have an answer for you for everything. So it's really cool that um, watching them and, and seeing them grow um, 
how comfortable they are now with working with different um, elected officials at different events. Um, I feel like my promotoras can go anywhere and just kind of fit right in and just go at it. And, you know, I, I remember, I don't know if you remember Avelia, she was um, at a census event last year when we were working on the census. And then I turn around and I'm like, where's Avelia? And she's on the other side of the park with La Señora del Carrito for Los Elotes. And she's um, filling out, her, helping her complete her census. Oh, that's great. That's and hilarious. Like, she's so amazing. Like how, you know, she, you know, she just went up to her and was like, oh, hola, señora. You know, she started a conversation and, you know, the woman was like, I heard about the census, but I don't know what it is and I don't know how to fill it out and I don't use a computer. Um, and Evelia's like, I got you. Here, <laughs> let me show you. And she pulls it up on her phone and she explains everything to her. She put it in Spanish. So it was really awesome. It's just, you know, we've worked uh, in collaboration with Chicago Connected. That's also a a program that's um, supporting CPS to provide internet, uh, high-speed internet to Chicago students, to CPS students. Mm -hmm. And we've been a part of this um, initiative and we've been able to supply high-speed internet through Comcast to over 60,000 families. Oh, wow. That is not a small number. No, not at all. And, um, and my, my, um, my promotoras have been a, a huge part of that. They've been making those phone calls. They've been calling people and they're able to speak to the community in their own language, you know, and say, hey, this is a service. And I always tell my promotoras, yes, it's a service that's free of cost to our families. However, there are funders who are investing this money into Comcast. Mm -hmm. So Comcast is getting paid in one way or another. Might um, as well. Might as well have so, make sure they're yes. being used. So why shouldn't our children benefit from this? Why shouldn't our families? We have families that are working from home who still need high speed internet. Internet is not cheap. I mean, I'm sure you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I I'm still waiting for Verizon to bring FiOS here in Chicago. So I didn't want to commit to like AT and T. You know, you didn't have to sign a contract. You want to check my credit? Like really? Uh, yeah. Like I'm like Holy. AT and T, and I think um. I want to say Comcast or um, I don't know who the That's other funny. internet providers are, but they wanted to like check credit and they wanted you to sign a contract um, for like two years. Oh, and I was like, I was doing way too much. That's too much of a commitment, right? Like you're providing me with internet service. I should not have to, and I'm paying you for it. I'm not asking you for it for, you know, like, uh, hey, bud, do, me, do me a favor. <laughs> I'm like, Hey, you know, let me get that you check my credit because you know it might be kind of <laughs> <Just, laughs> just, just bought a house like um, relax with this yeah i'm like absolutely not so um i didn't want to commit to anybody so i actually for my own personal service at home i got wow um and i was like man this is gonna be i hope this is good because you know i don't have cable or anything like that um but i just needed internet service yeah we need internet right now yeah, I need Wi-Fi for everything. Um, and so it's just been, it's been insane. Um, and so even with that, right, like I, I, I know what I'm doing, but we have families who, you know, they're going through Comcast, they're getting the high speed internet. Um, and so we're helping along with that process. And we're just helping families make sure that they're getting everything that they need. Um, and the speeds aren't bad. They were, um, you know, they just actually, we did a survey in um, early February. And again, the promotoras were out there. They were making the phone calls. They were calling families. Um, and they were able to double the speed from like three to six. Wow. All right. That's that's decent. Yeah. Decent. It's pretty cool. Pretty good. I mean, I know you know more about that stuff than I do. So I'm, I'm not even really sure what that means. Like it went from three to six, but I just know it was good. I believe uh, it means three megabytes per second. Yes, that's it. <laughs> so, I mean, it doubled. Three yeah. is like, uh, that's not that great. Six is definitely manageable, though. Like, See, you could watch YouTube on it. You could watch YouTube on it, right? Just and so, yeah, an that's, issue. yeah. Is that good for like, you know, so one of the promotoras has it herself in her home and she's like, we're a family of five. And she said her son does gaming and stuff. And even when it was at three, she's like, I never had any problem. Oh, wow. 
and then the kids, all three kids are on it during the day for school. And then she said she was on it, obviously making like our phone calls and stuff when we were doing outreach for census. Um, and then later on for Chicago Connected. Um, yeah, I mean, six is decent. I think my mother-in-law has like 10 to 12 or something, something like that. So yeah, I don't know. It's manageable. Wow. Yeah. Oh, can we talk about the one that uh, I worked on? Play Streets. Oh my gosh, I love Play Streets. Um, and yes, you came in literally when like Play Streets was getting started. Um, Play Streets is a collaboration uh, with CDPH. CDPH um, has, um, we, Gadsdale has worked with CDPH since 2012 as the delegate agency for Play Streets. For the South um, so, What was that? For the South region? So for the West region, so West. we normally we normally um, are the delegate agency for the West region. Um, one year, which was my very first year in this position, I did the whole city, uh, which was 28 uh, organizations, and then uh, 29 and 30 was Gads Hill Center. So we facilitated our own Play Streets events, um, but it was basically 30 organizations that I needed to delegate for. Um, it was an awesome project. I was able to foster so many relationships with so many organizations throughout the city. Um, but our main initiative is to reduce childhood obesity, um, to work on bringing and providing resources to the community from different um, mental wellness groups, from hospitals, whether it be um, bringing awareness to diabetes and people with heart disease and just making sure people are getting screenings for different things like cancer and um, kidney screenings and things like that. So it's been, it, it, it's an amazing program. Um, Play Streets, some people would refer to it as a big block party. Well, yeah, isn't um, that kind of what it is. It, it kind of is. It is definitely a block party, right? We, we closed down a street. Uh, Pre-COVID, of course, we break down, you know, we close down a street and there's games everywhere. Um, there's various physical activities, um, but the main initiative is to foster relationships, community engagement with our Chicago um, community police officers, our firefighters. Um, we had one um, event where we had the Chicago um, smoke trailer come out. So they were able to take the kids in and help them kind of understand what happens if there's smoke in their house, what to do when that happens. And, um, you know, what the firefighter looks like when they're coming into the house. If, you know, you see a firefighter, don't, you know, fight them off or don't run away from them. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it's just amazing to work with our, our Chicago Fire Department, as well as our community police officers. Believe it or not, I have video, I can prove it. We had some amazing officers in Pilsen come out and um, they got called out to the center of the um, event and they did the cha-cha slide with some of our clinicians and all of our kids. Um, it was an amazing event. It was really great. Um, I have to say that CPD has been really supportive in our um, our Pilsen and our back of the yards neighborhoods. Um, they're very responsive. They're very, um, they're just great. They really are all about building relationships with the community. Wow. That's, uh, you said yeah. it so perfectly. Like that, <laughs> that really is what it is. It's, it's educating people, not, there's a focus on health but it's like a little bit of everything. Yeah. So, Local elected officials are invited. We always invite um, the aldermen and, you know, the commissioner and things like that for the areas so that they can attend so that people in the community can meet them and talk to them and, you know, express needs or find out how to go to the alderman's office and, and, and talk about what you need um, in the community, how to get more involved so that, you know, we're also taking back that space, right? Because these aren't always um the nicest areas right or the safest neighborhoods right but we're still going out there and we're we're there with the community so that they know they're in a safe environment we're playing games um if there is food it's always healthy food um we go through a whole training with our with our community-based partners and we ask them to only supply certain kinds of food 
Um, so it, it, before COVID, obviously, um, you know, it was nice to walk through the events and see people trying different foods. Um, kids, you know, some some of our some of our partners who were first time partners in 2019 were like, I'm not going to get kids to eat anything healthy, and they're not, you know, how am I supposed to do this? And I said, well, one, you can either not offer food, or see how it goes. Um, and they um, after you know, when we did our summer wrap up in October, they were like, yeah, we definitely had kids trying stuff. They were excited to try things. Um, I also encourage our, our, our partners to have um, a mental health table so kids can learn how to blow bubbles to calm down, uh, make a stress ball, um, explain to them why it's important for you to, you know what, just walk away from a situation rather than. Oh, that's so important. You know, just teaching the little ones and, you know, helping them be comfortable. And so mental health, uh, physical activity, community engagement, and providing resources and teaching a little bit as much as we can on nutrition and financial wellness and just introducing things to the community. So how was it when COVID started, when COVID happened 2020? 2020 went virtual. Um, and I, uh, we, when we did our training, you were there. Um, so build, build Chicago is the delegate agency now for, um, last year was their first year, but they are the delegate agency for the South region. And they have, um, you know, we did the, we did the training together. And so we explained to everyone, look, this is new for all of us. We don't know exactly what this is going to look like, but we are going to ask you to, pre-record or do a live session of yoga, Zumba, um, you know, just different physical activities that you guys can think of and come up with, and then just try to provide resources. Everything went virtual and was posted on social media. Mm -hmm. So all the organizations just used all their social media outlets to post all those different, um, all those different activities. And it was really cool. And I think even when we go back to in-person, I think that I'll still incorporate, um, some virtual activities because then you have more people participating. So if we have events in Chinatown, we have people on the west side or on the south side who can participate in those as well. Yeah, plus it kind of lasts forever. Like mm -hmm. it can last for that day, but if there's video, people, you know, five years later can still look back at it. Yeah, and you can still utilize it. You can still learn from it. Um, so this year, my plan is to incorporate more pre-recorded resources mm -hmm. in addition to the like main kind of event. And you, you attended some of those, you, um, you, you were able to watch some of those yeah. for me. I'm um, talking as if I wasn't there. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was the yeah. person that had to tally up all the numbers for you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So what was the one you attended for? Um, I think that one was for, um, Oh my gosh, I can't, I'm drawing a blank right now. The organization that you attended the, the, uh, one of the events for, it was a zoom event, right? And you guys, um, did like a, was it, did you attend the paint and sip? I'll be honest, Rosa. I don't remember. That was... <laughs> so we had quite a few that did paint and sip. So it was like, um, they provided the little canvas and the kids got to sit and, um, there was like a, there was like somebody kind of moderating how to draw something or the kids were able. So they also gave them like a juice box. So it wasn't like a paint and sip, like how we originally started paint and sips. Right. right but right. it was like a family paint and sip. So yeah. like they were provided with like juice boxes and like organic popcorn or something of that nature. And it was really fun. And there were so many different things. I know um, the Chinese service American league had the paint and sip. Um, and so did, um, Oh my gosh, I can't remember, but I know Carol, uh, I know so many of our different uh, partners um, did so many different things. They did outdoor biking events. They did some running events. Um, and so a lot of Zumba, a lot of yoga. So all of those different events that took place, um, a lot of what I got back, especially from um, Chicago Youth Center, they said that they noticed that parents were so much more involved. When we had in-person events, parents were like, oh, yeah, go play. You know, they just send the kids and they kind of just sit on their porch because they're on blocks with family houses mm -hmm. and stuff. 
And um, this time being virtual, they noticed that parents were so much more involved. Parents were doing so much more with kids. And I have to say from my own experience with COVID, I cannot tell you how many great conversations I've been able to sit down and have with my kids and actually have dinner. Um, I do work a lot. So even if it's a late dinner or even if it's something that, um, if it's takeout or whatever, but I cannot tell you how many times I've had conversation, had dinner and then had conversations that lasted a couple hours with my kids. Oh. And they're 12, 14, and 17. So it's it's been a blessing. Um, that's the silver lining to COVID for me, working from home. Um, I was really able to spend a lot more time that I wouldn't have been able to spend, especially with my 17-year-old who's going to be going away to school. I mean, it's not like anybody's got any place to go right now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so it's definitely... Um, I was so excited to hear that from so many of our partners, from Boys and Girls Club, from, um, you know, um, Mary Crane, and just so many different partners that talked about how um, parents were so excited to um, receive these activity kits and work on them and then kind of associate that with what the organization was posting um, to their website. So if there was like a yoga event, they did like yoga mats or if they did you know just a physical activity um they might have put things in the activity kits like um balloons for water balloons uh during the hotter days um they might have supplied bubbles for you know going over breathing techniques for you know how to help kids kind of calm down um and so many other so many other things that were really exciting jump ropes were a big thing and just kind of like um doing a challenge so a lot of the organizations did like these TikTok challenges and stuff and so they were like um parents were like really competitive with their kids <laughs> well yeah you can't let your nine-year-old outshine you <laughs> yeah exactly so they were like oh no we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this right like and if you win you win but um you know it's gonna be legit be so it was really cool to see parents get involved and i have to say after the year that we had with so many tragic things happening in chicago um, it was exciting and it was really heartfelt to hear those things that were positive coming from play streets. And so when they talked about at the end of the summer and they talked about, um, possibly having to cut the budget for play streets for this year, um, you know, I told the director at, at CDPH, I said, can you please really just, um, you know, can you please let them know how this was something so positive that came out of such a negative summer. Yeah. Um, it was definitely the first summer for everybody that nothing was happening. Yeah. And it was, you know, it, it was, it was really hard for a lot of people. It was really, um, you know, I have a parent, a weekly support group right now for parents and anyone who wants to join, but um, you know, just kind of, bringing something supportive and it's it's actually facilitated by two of our our clinical interns and um it's just been 2020 was a tough year man it was a tough year and so to have something so positive and so nice come out of play streets it was it was great if i remember right some people were kind of iffy in the beginning mm -hmm. where they were oh. like virtual like why would we do that but, yeah, I mean, do you remember how many times we had to just be on the phone with people and just yeah. kind of like really work it over and be like, look, it's our yeah. first time too. Yeah. We're going to go through it together. I remember emailing a lot of like, sorry, you can't do that in person <laughs> event. I did at least like 10 of those. Oh, yeah. 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 There was a lot. They were like, well, can we just do this? <laughs> just do this in person what if we just have 20 people in person and I'm like no guys we can't um, and so as of now um the mayor's office has said no in-person play streets for this summer as well so it's just like family and household yes mm -hmm. okay. yeah um I don't know if that'll change as we get closer to the summer but I was informed on Saturday um that our numbers are going back up that our COVID positive rate is going back up. Um, 
and I think we just, we get really excited. And I think that once we were like, oh yeah, like everybody's getting vaccinated and we're all good. So we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna we're start, start planning kind of for going outside. Back to <laughs> and it got nice out, right? Super fast. And so people are like automatically like, oh, it's summertime. We could be outside. Um, and I'm like, no, it's not summer yet. And we can't be outside around so many people. So let's take a step back and chill. I do want to say for the record, you and I, we did have to tell people no in-person events, but we would have loved if we could. <laughs> right. Yes. You have no idea how many times I wanted to say yes. I mean, I wanted to say yes so many times, um, but absolutely not. Like there was no way we could not possibly have any um, outbreaks or any, you know, that that's not just because it was at, it was asked by the mayor's office for us not to do it, but because I could never, I I could never be responsible for that. Like I I would I would feel awful. Oh my gosh, you know. So I was like, no, I'm sorry. Um, you know, we have one organization in back of the yards, and they were um, they were still um, hosting other events through other um, partnerships. And they asked me a couple of times, they're like, can we just partner this? Can we just pair this with Play Streets? And I mean, they were great events. They were like softball with the community police and the neighborhood kids. And I was like, man, that would be amazing. Yeah. But I was like, I'm sorry, we cannot, I cannot, I can't accept that. It's so tough having to be like responsible, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So. Especially working so like directly with cdph like that would be a bad look as well oh yeah for sure all right they would not yeah. be happy with me yeah <laughs> i don't i like to keep cdph happy <laughs> uh, that's my goal all summer is to keep cdph happy <laughs> wow yeah um, yeah there's um i don't know if you remember miguel and ivan and they are you know i probably they are probably the only people other than you know my own boss, but that I'm like, if I get a text or a, a, a message, uh, an email, I'm like, oh, what yeah, do you need? You, what do you, you need? Did tell me that. Um, I like to keep them happy. Yeah, I like to keep them happy um, because I love the program. I love the program and I don't ever want them to think that I'm being neglectful or irresponsible by any means. So that's really important. All right, Rosa, I'm sorry to say it. it's getting a little late. Oh my gosh. I didn't even realize how late it was right all right let's start talking about the future on top of everything you're responsible for what else you got going on uh i just started my master's program for public health nice so, super excited um is that also through trinity no um and the funny thing is, so as soon as I graduated, I was like, I need to start my master's program. And I, like I said, I graduated in 2014 and I was like, I'm going to start my master's. I'm going to start my master's. But had I started at that time, I would have gone right back into psychology. I would have earned my master's in psychology or, um, or, or, um, or social work. Oh. Um, and so I've, um, now that I'm in this role, um, I've realized that public health is definitely the route for me, but I was really torn between um, an MSW or my MPH because it still kind of does a lot of the same thing, but I'm more interested in public health as a community. So that's master in social work or master in public health, I'm guessing. Yeah, and I guess, so I read about both and I kind of researched both and you can you can work in public health with both kind of, you know, some positions will allow you to have a, a master of social work, but I chose to do my master's of public health. So then after you graduate, because you will definitely graduate 3.8 GPA, right? <sighs> Hopefully. <laughs> um, I'm in week four of my first semester. So, <laughs> oh, you got this. You're going to graduate. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm halfway through my first, uh, my first session of classes. So, oh, you yeah. do eight week. Uh... Yes. They're what? like eight week blocks and then you start the new class oh, instead that, of taking two consecutively. That that sounds difficult. So I actually like, like it that way. You like it? I don't know. Yeah, because then I'm only taking one class at a time. And it's like a constant stream of class. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you're right. That's that's a good way to think about it. I don't know. I'm just so used to like four classes every semester. Yeah. Which uh, I don't know. It's difficult. 
Um, oh so, yeah, yeah. It's for sure. So like, what's the what's the future hold for you? You're gonna be like running CDPH or IDPH <laughs> or something? <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I don't know what that's gonna look like. I just think that um, I know that I want to focus on community and I want to focus on um, what happens in the community and how it affects the people who live there. Um, I want to be able to bring programs to communities that are going to be beneficial and intentional and um, just really continue to help our our low income and at risk communities just really thrive and get informed. I think that's, you know, it's a huge thing we need to that's that's a huge component is informing the community informing parents informing um kids informing you know teaching them financial literacy teaching them civic engagement um so that they can move forward and know um how to make changes in their community so they can become change makers wow that's that's really that's really great rosa like <laughs> You'll bring a tear to my eye. Thanks. Like it's like leaving this world way better than when we went in, you know. That's the hope. That's the hope. All right. Well, uh, Rosa, do you is any last words? I actually still have to shower. I haven't even showered yet. I just came <laughs> straight from work and I hopped on. Where are you working now? I can't say where, but oh, okay. I'm scheduling people for the next now. game. Yeah. You're working now. Okay. Yeah, I was working in a COVID testing lab. Right. Now I'm scheduling people for the vaccine. Okay, cool. So if you need, uh, oh wait, you already have your vaccine. What are you talking about? I do, I do. But, um, but yeah, definitely, we'll 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 connect later. But hopefully, you'll be able to join me Saturday, and you can tell me a little bit more about it. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I'll be there. I don't know who else will be there. But I'll be there. <laughs> Yeah, um, if your girlfriend's willing, have her come with you. That would be cool. Yep, I'll bring my mother-in-law. She knows everything. <laughs> there you go. So I'm going to send you the link to sign up because um, there is a, a form that we need to fill out for any of the volunteers that are coming. So you guys can just sign up for that second shift with me. From You guys can come from like noon or 1 o'clock to um, probably 5.30, 6 o'clock after cleanup. All right. And it's going to be a little cold around that time, right? Isn't it going to be rainy? Oh, God, I hope not. I hope not. But thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you. This has been a month in the making. You are so... I know. Hard. Sorry. <laughs> it's been hard. It's been hard. Uh, 60% chance of rain. Oh, man. Great. Well... Bring, bring rain boots. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to have to wear some rain boots and see if I can get a raincoat or something from Amazon. So. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you again, Rosa, for the time. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'll let you know when it's up. Yeah, definitely. Let me know. Tell your friends. I hate the way I sound on the anything. So Why? I, don't I don't know if I'll listen to it, but. <laughs> you sound fine. Everybody. You know what? I was the, I was the same way. But now you're used to it. I mean, I have to be at this point, right? Yeah, definitely. definitely. All right, Rosa, you have a good night. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.